Well, greetings again. Today I'd like to share with you about the contemplative spiritual discipline of listening to God through his creation. Psalm 19 verses 1 through 4 says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. So Psalm 19 reminds us that God's creation is continuously speaking of God's glory and displaying God's craftsmanship, making God known. The Bible oftentimes points us to God through his artistry, through his creation, such as this beautiful scene here in Cannon Beach today. Uh, God tells us about his own character and invites us to pay attention to God through what he has made, through his very handiwork. But are we listening? I had a lovely conversation with a friend of a family a couple of weeks ago when we were out camping down in Southern Oregon. And uh, this friend was asking if the Bible has anything to say about caring for the earth, about caring for uh, nature and, and caring for the universe. I said, oh yes. Uh, I enthusiastically affirm that the Bible oftentimes speaks about this. And we talked for a, about an hour and a half around the campfire that morning about the care of creation and the challenges that we as human beings have had of doing so. I shared him with how the Bible is full of invitations for us to care for the earth, to care for the soil, the land, the air, the water, the sky, uh, other creatures, to care for our own bodies. Uh, Adam and Eve were called to steward the Garden of Eden, to be caretakers of God's beautiful creation. And we're still called by God to wisely steward all that God has made, and uh, including our own bodies. Uh, we care for what God has made because God calls us to do so. We care for our own bodies because we are made in the image of God. And we listen to creation because God is speaking through what God has made, telling us about his own very nature, about God's glory, his beauty, his art artistry, and his brilliant creative power. But are we listening? Paul declares in Romans 1, verse 20, ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So we have no excuse for not knowing God. Through everything God made, we get to know God through our senses, by what we see, what we taste, what we smell, what we touch, and what we hear. Listening to creation is one way to listen to God, spoken clearly through his, his word. Over and over again in the Bible, we hear creation crying out with praises to the Creator, all creation speaking to us of God's wonders. Here's a couple of examples. Psalm 96. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Will you just look at the beauty of the sea today and listen to what God is speaking. There's the ocean roars. This is the scene here in Cannon Beach. I'll pan back here. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy, says Psalm 96. Job in chapter 12 says, ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds of the sky, they will tell you, speak to the earth and it will teach you. Let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of these things does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. Uh, later on in Job, we have that beautiful song of creation in Job chapter 38. Here's verses 4 through 7. Were you, where were you, Job, when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked out its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its found footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Oh, there's so many other great passages. Psalm 65, I love the phrase from Psalm 65, 
verse 9 that says the streams of God are filled with water. Uh, verse 13, the meadows are covered with flocks, the valleys are mantled with grain. The meadows and the valleys shout for joy and they sing. In each of these passages and so many other passages, creation speaks forth praises, sings for joy, and teaches us about God or declares God's wonders. But are we listening? Are we paying attention? Are we hearing God's voice to us in his, in his cre creation, in his handiwork? One of the most uh, best known heroes of the faith from church history that celebrated God in nature is, of course, St. Francis. Um, he lived from 1181 until 1226. He loved calling aspects of God's creation his brother or his sister, as we can hear in his beautifully expressed poem called The Canticle of Creation, the Song of Creation. Here's his prayer. Most high, all-powerful, good Lord, be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially, my Lord, through brother son who brings the day, and you give light through him, and he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendor. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness. Praised be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars. In heaven you form them clear and precious and beautiful. And then Francis goes on to praise the Lord for Brother Wind and for Sister Water and for Brother Fire and Sister Earth. Uh, Francis teaches us from eight centuries ago how to listen to God's creation by considering every element in creation, sun, moon, stars, wind, water, fire, earth, as part of my family, my brothers, my sisters. But how do we practically listen to God through creation? Here are a couple of pr practical ways. And by the way, you can find these also on my pastor's blog, which is found at waterpaths.org. And then you go onto the blog tab and you find Cannon Beach Log. And this particular uh, uh, podcast is written out there and expressed there in a written form. Okay, so three ways to practically listen to God in creation. First of all, is do like I did today, which is just to go outside. Just to go enjoy time out in nature. Go out into what God has made, sit still, surround yourself with God's creation. You know, we spend most of our time indoors these days, surrounded by what humans have made, disconnected from nature. And even when we do get outside, too often we're only seeing nature in forms that are highly maintained, like a lawn or a playground. Uh, our children are oftentimes growing up alienated from God's creation. And this develops what a uh, journalist and writer, Richard Louvre, writes in his book, uh, The Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder. He calls this nature deficit disorder. Needing to spend more time outside, watching the clouds, listening to nature, connecting up with God through what God has made is a really good thing. Just simply going outside into the natural elements and connecting up with our souls, with God's soul expressed in nature. A second practical way to listen to God through nature is actually to use our ears and our eyes to pay attention to the sounds and sights of nature. As you can hear, the birds are singing right now. Uh, it may simply be the sound of the wind and the leaves on a, in a tree in your yard. Uh, we live near, near the ocean. It's just a not too far a walk to get right down to this beautiful site. And I'm so richly blessed to be able to be near the ocean and enjoy the sounds of the sea as so easily seen here. The song is so constant that I oftentimes neglect to pay attention to the waves. All your waves and breakers have swept over me, writes one of the sons of Korah in Psalm 42. The sounds of God's waves and breakers are sweeping over me as I uh, record this particular podcast. You can hear them uh, in the background here today. Uh, yesterday, while I was sitting uh, uh, on, on my deck outside with Trina, my wife, I heard a frog singing very near our deck. I had not heard a frog in that part of the forest for years. And that single song of a frog singing right near my deck, it just delighted me. That part of the forest near my home is healthy enough to be able to sustain a frog that is living there and singing its own song, its own praises. I just love that. I love listening to bird song, especially at dawn and at dusk. Birds sing all day, but they especially love to sing at 
the, ser the, the song uh, uh, worship service in the morning called Lauds the, at dawn, and also at dusk, at Vespers, they're Lauds and Vespers singers, and they offer their praises to God. So just go outside and listen to birds. You know, Martin Luther uh, loved to call birds God's little theologians. He says they point us to God. Jesus told us the same thing. Consider the birds. Pay attention and study the ravens. I like to think of God's uh, chorus as the birds. So God's choir is bird song. And um, in, next to my home, I love hearing the birds. I can oftentimes hear 10 to 15 different species of birds singing simultaneously throughout the forest, echoing and hauntingly high up in the, in the conifers, up in the, uh, the beautiful evergreen trees. I'll hear that, that beautiful, tall, sh 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 shrill song of the varied thrush coming. Uh, from way up in the high sp uh, uh, spruce trees, and it just causes my spine to tingle with delight. The articulate, bold song of the winter wren echoing uh, throughout the forest thrills my heart to hear it every time. So go outside and listen to the sounds of nature and learn what nature is speaking to you. Finally, is to make a habit of studying God's creation. Take time to focus upon one little portion of God's creation and use your mind, your senses, your reason, uh, your powers of observation to learn all you can about that part of nature. I love our scientists, our marine scientists, our ornithologists, our ichthyologists, the people who study fish, our botanists, the people who study plants, our biologists, the people who study living things. I love ravens. I've bought as many books as I can about ravens. Uh, and one of the ones that I recommend to you is a study by a guy named Bernd Heinrich, his book called Mind of the Raven. He's a writer naturalist who raised ravens in captivity and then set them free so that he could more closely study their behaviors. Uh, we have ravens in our own neck of the woods right next to our house that nest there and they're there year round and I just love listening to them. In Luke 12, 24, Jesus says this, he commands us, study the ravens, intently study the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? The verb Jesus uses here is kata noeo, which means to intensely study, like to become an ornithologist, a student of ravens. Uh, I love that he uses, co focuses our attention upon this particular bird because it's found all over the planet. And why study ravens? We learn more about God's care of these amazing birds, giving them remarkable abilities to find food and habitat and survive, and how much more valuable are we than ravens? The contemplative spiritual discipline of listening to God through creation, by going outside, by listening to nature, and by studying God's creation will lead us deeper into life with God, deepen our life of praise, adoration, and gratitude to God who cares for us so greatly, loves us so deeply, and provides for us so completely. May we also find as we study creation and listen to God in creation, that our stress levels are being reduced, our joy has increased, and our appreciation for the people around us, part of God's creation, has been richly enhanced. I hope this has been helpful. God bless you all as you go outside today and enjoy part of God's creation. Amen. <laughs>